video, we'll be setting up the AI hat to run pose estimation in Python. We're gonna be going through the process of setting up the hat from scratch, as well as installing the required Python pipelines and taking a look at some demo scripts to do some cool stuff like controlling hardware and even controlling a game like Fruit Ninja. More importantly though, we'll be looking at how you can take what we learn here and start applying pose estimation in your own Python projects. Let's get into it. To follow along, you'll need a Pi 5. A two gigabyte or larger size model will work here. You'll also need an AI hat. This guide will work with both the 13 and 26 top version. You'll also need a camera module. We're using the V3 module here, and you may need a camera cable adapter. The Pi 5 comes with a smaller camera connector and your camera may not come with the needed adapter for it, so it's worth just double checking. And you'll find links to these things below, as well as a link to the written guide, where we also have the things there, as well as all the commands and code that we'll be using in this guide. In Installing the hat is nice and straightforward, but there is one thing you might need to watch out for. It comes with this header extender to lengthen your pins, but after installing the hat, these pins might not fully poke through. If you need these pins exposed to plug in hardware, you'll find a link below to some longer pins that fix this issue. To install your hat, first put that header extension onto the Pi's GPIO pins like so. Then screw on the four standoffs that come with the hat. Then lift the PCIe tab on the Pi and insert the hat cable so it sits nice and square in there and push back down on the tab to secure it in place. Then gently slide the hat onto the pins, being careful not to bend them. They are quite long and very prone to bending. After that, connect the camera cable to the camera. It uses the same tab locking system and then connect the camera to the Pi. It's the same deal again. Lift the tab, sit the cable in and push it back down to secure it. Four screws to hold the hat down and you are ready to go. Now go ahead and install Pi OS onto the micro SD card, whack it into your Pi, and then run through the first time installation. There's nothing special we need to do in this process here. All right, now that we're in the desktop, we can get cracking. We're just gonna go ahead and open up a new terminal window, and we're gonna update our Pi with update and Great. Then with this line, we're gonna install all the drivers and software needed to run the hat itself. And this can take a good five minutes or so to install, so go and grab a cup of tea or coffee. And once that's finished, just go ahead and restart your Pi. Now we are ready to install the basic Python pipelines from Halo's GitHub. First things first, let's clone the repository from their GitHub, which is really easy to do with this line here. Once that's finished downloading, if you head to your Pi's home folder like so, you can see this folder that we just downloaded here. And this is gonna be the home of all of our Python scripts and pretty much everything we're going to be doing in this video. Now back to our terminal, we're gonna to need to tell it to work out of that folder that we just created with this change directory command here. And you can see with this blue text here, our command terminal is now working in this folder. Now we need to run the handy installation file that the folks at Halo have made for us and this sets up the rest of what we need and we can do so with this command here. And again, this one may take a good five minutes or so to install. And just a little thing here that left us scratching our heads, if you ever change the hat, say you go from a 13 to 26 top hat, you will need to run this command again for the Pi to correctly recognize it. Whatever AI hat you have on the Pi when you run this installation is the hat that it gets set up for. Once that installation has finished, reboot your Pi once more. And with that, we have set up everything we need. Now, a quick little exploration of what we have here. In our Halo's example folder, we have two very important folders in here. We have the resources folder, which is gonna have all of the YOLO models that have been installed with that installation line we just run. And they've also been converted to the HEF file format, which the hat needs. It's a specific format specifically for the AI hats. In there, we're also gonna have the basic pipelines folder, which has all of our pipeline code and demo codes to run with those pipelines. Now, what is a pipeline in this context? Well, long story short, it's a series of code that allows us to easily interact with the hat itself. It definitely is possible to write your own custom pipeline for your own custom model or project, but that is quite involved. So we'll be sticking with the example pipeline they have provided for us. So let's fire up that pipeline and give some pose estimation a quick test. Now, a quirk of just the way that Halo has set all of this up is that we'll want to run all of our Python scripts from the command line, but we do need to set up the terminal before we do that. We're gonna use the same command as before to set our terminal to work in that directory with the change directory command. And then we're gonna run this source command to get it to work in the virtual environment that our install command set up. If you ever close this terminal or restart your Raspberry Pi, you will need to run these two steps before you can run these Python scripts again. So we're gonna run a Python script located in the basic pipelines folder where all of our stuff is, and that's called pose underscore estimation dot pi. 
And if we run that, it takes a little while for the hat to boot up. You can see that our setup is working and we are running pose estimation. And to stop our script from running, we need to select the terminal window and hit control C. And that stops it like so. So we can see how to use a different input by running the same line as before, but putting this dash dash help on the end. And this is going to bring up a whole bunch of options that we can use with the pose estimation pipeline. And as you can see here, we can specify dash dash input and rpy to use one of the pi's camera modules. There are a few other helpful things in here as well if you want to check it out later. So I'm just going to punch in clear to clear this up so we can see a bit better. And I'm going to press up to go to the last command that we ran. But instead of running help, I'm going to type in that input dash rpi. Give it a little bit to boot up. Oh, and there we go. We have pose estimation running on the camera. And as you can see, the yellow model is estimating the position of these points on my body. We call them key points. And then it's drawing the lines between them to try and figure out the orientation of my body. And these key points that it's generating right now is the main thing that we'll be using to do stuff with. There is a weird artifact happening right now. These are meant to be my legs down here, but because you can't see them, it's kind of just estimating them to be somewhere here. As far as we can tell, this is hard coded into it and it's a behavior that you can't really change. So you just gotta learn to work with it. But if I'm standing back here in full frame, it's not really that much of an issue. All right, sweet. We have pose estimation running with our camera. Let's dive into the code to see what's actually going on behind the scenes. If you head into the basic pipelines folder, you'll find this Python file called pose underscore estimation. This is the actual code that we are running. And it's also the thing that you want to modify so you can implement your own projects with this computer vision. Now, it is a little bit confusing what's going on here. There is a lot of moving parts. So we went ahead and repackaged this to make it a bit more user friendly and easy to use. But if you want to use this original code that it comes with, we have a breakdown in our object recognition video. It is for object recognition, but it's similar enough to get you going. So to use our repackaged code, head on over to the written guide that's linked below and you'll be able to find the first lot of demo code. Go ahead, create a new script, paste it in and save it. And you want to save it to the same basic pipelines folder and you can name it anything, but ensure it has the .py on there. And we're just going to call this pose simple though. So in this code, we have our regular import section. This is where you would usually import all of your stuff. But then in this function at the top here called custom processing thread, this is where you would put the rest of your regular code. So if you were doing something like setting up a servo or defining constants or any of the stuff that you run once, you'd put it here. And then this while true loop here is just your usual while true loop that you use. It's all just instead nested inside of this custom processing thread function. And the reason we're doing this is because we're using something called threading, which essentially allows two different bits of your Python code to run at the same time. There's another 200 lines of code at the end and you don't have to worry about that. That's all like pulling the levers and running the actual AI hat and the pose estimation. And all of that runs in the background while our custom code here runs and it pulls the latest pose estimation data from all of that machinery. The whole point of this script is so you don't have to touch that and it just kind of does its own thing. And in this while Trulip here, you can see two functions that we've created to just really simplify that process. We have this function called get body part coordinates. You put in the body part you want and you get out the position of it where it is on the screen. And if you want a list of all the names of the body parts, you can just scroll down a little bit and you'll find it down there. The other one is this calculate body part angle. And if we scroll over, you can see that we input three positions and it calculates the angle between them all. We say left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist, and it calculates this angle here. Just be aware it is always measuring clockwise from the camera's point of view. So this would be 90, that would be 180, and that would be 270 and obviously we'd go around to 360 and then we'd start at zero again and keep going around. And just very important here, the part that we put our code in starts with this two second sleep. This is not essential, but it's a good idea because it gives our hat time to boot up and actually start processing data. Now to actually run this new script, it's going to be the exact same line as before, but instead of pose underscore estimation, which was the name of the old file, we're just gonna go ahead and change that to pose underscore simple, which is the name of the new file. You just need to specify the name of the file that you wish to run. Even if we run that, you can see we've got our pose estimation and in the shell here, you can see we're printing out the angle data as well as the position of my left wrist. So 90, 180 and 270. And those two numbers in the brackets there are actually the X and Y coordinates of my wrist. Now this is using something called relative X and Y coordinates. 
So on the x-axis running this way across the screen, here is gonna be zero and here is gonna be 1.0 and halfway through is gonna be 0.5, three quarters of the way is gonna be 0.75. And on the y-axis, the top of the screen is gonna be zero, the bottom of the screen is gonna be one and halfway is 0.5 and so on, so on. Now from here, you should have enough to go and implement this code in your own projects and do whatever you want with it. But we thought we would have a bit of fun and show you some short and sweet projects we made with this just to really reinforce how to use it. Let's just stop it with Control C. And before we begin, let's do something about this really annoying FPS readout in the shell here. It's just clogging up our shell feed. In our basic pipelines folder, you can go ahead and open up this RPI commons folder. I'm just gonna do so in Thony. In here, you'll find a heap of code that controls some of the very very fundamental behavior of this whole setup. And I'd be very careful changing anything in here because you can very easily break your whole pipeline. Also note that if you change anything in here, it's not just gonna affect your pose estimation code, but your object detection code if you've got some setup running as well. So if we take a look for this function called on FPS measurement, here you can find the line that is printing out the FPS. We're just gonna comment it out like so. Another thing we can also do is change the resolution of our setup. This doesn't change the resolution that YOLO is processing at. It instead just changes the camera resolution. Now you can't just set any random resolution you like. You need to keep it to a standard size. But if we do something like 1920 by 1080, and if we save that and go ahead and run that, you can see that we now have a bit wider of a field of view. We're not as zoomed in as before. And you can also play around with it. Let's say we do 1920 by 1920, run that or save it, then run that. You can see that we're running in this square resolution now. There are some weird issues with the pipeline giving you varying levels of performance depending on your resolution, but we found that 1920 by 1080 gives you a good balance between size of your image and running at a smooth FPS. All right, let's get some custom code going. This one is going to solve an issue that I have. When I'm working in my workshop, I might be watching a podcast or listening to music on YouTube, and I need to pause it, but I'm on the other side of the room. Let's use pose estimation to pause and play the video if I raise my hands above my head. This isn't really a common thing you would do when you're working, so you don't accidentally play and pause your video. Now to do so, we're gonna be using a library called WType. It allows us to simulate keystrokes on our keyboard with Python code. And this is an external library that we're going to have to install into the virtual environment that this whole process has set up. And to do so is really easy. As long as our terminal has been set up with the change directory and the source command, just this is the state that we usually run our scripts from, we can just simply punch in the installation code like so. Once that's installed on our written page, you'll find the second lot of demo code for this. Create a new script, paste it in, and save it to the same pipelines folder with the rest of our scripts. And this code is pretty straightforward. Up the top here, we have import subprocess, which is what we're gonna use to elegantly run wtype. And then in our while true loop, we're gonna get the position of the left wrist, the right wrist, and the nose. And these three variables here will actually hold two numbers, the X and Y coordinates. Down here, you can see we're saying if left wrist one, and then one in the square brackets, that means we're accessing the Y coordinate of the left wrist. If we instead have left wrist zero, that means we're accessing the X coordinate. So remember on the Y axis, zero is the top. So we're saying if the left wrist Y is lower, so it's closer to zero, then my nose and the same same is for my right wrist, then we're going to run wtype and press the K button, which is pause on YouTube. It's just a hotkey for it. And then after that, we're going to put it to sleep for two seconds, because if I raised my hands like that, it would keep play, pause, play, pause, play, pause. That just gives us two seconds to lower the hands before it pauses or plays it again. And we're just going to go ahead and run that. We need to change the name to posekeyboard.py, which is the name that we saved it under. And if we run that, we're just gonna use our object detection AI hat guide as an example. You should check it out if you haven't yet. And I should be able to raise my hands and it pauses. And if I raise my hands again, it plays again. And as you can see, that gives us like a two second window here to lower our hands before it does the thing again. It's quite responsive as well. Like it only needs to see a frame above my head for it to play and pause. Oh, we're in the two, we're in the two second window there. All right, second lot of sample code. We're gonna go ahead and control some servos with the position of our body parts. I've gone ahead and blue text some servos and Legos together. It's a little bit jank, but it demonstrates what you can do with it. Code's on the course page, new script, paste it in, save it, and here we are. Really straightforward, we import our servo library up here, as you usually do. Then in this part of the code that runs once at the top of our 
processing thread. We set up our elbow and our shoulder servo. And very importantly, we keep our two seconds sleep in there, let the hat set up. Then we come into our while true loop and we grab the elbow angle by, if we scroll over, getting the angle between the left shoulder, the left elbow and the left wrist. And then we grab the shoulder angle by grabbing the right shoulder, left shoulder, elbow. So this kind of angle here. And then after that, we have these bits of code here, and this is essentially assuring that our angles stick between 0 and 180, because if we tried to feed 190 degrees into the server library, it might not like it. And you can extend your arm beyond 180 if I did like that. So we get the angle from YOLO, ensure it's between 0 and 180, we print them out, and then we just simply send it to the servo. And then we have a little bit of a sleep on there. It's a bit jittery, my servos are a little bit noisy. Oh, oh. We could definitely benefit from some filtering here. My servers are a little jitty and the data coming out of the YOLO model is a little bit jittery as well, but it works. Oh, up, down, oh, that's the end of it. All right, final code, you know the drill, new script, copy paste, and this one is pretty darn cool. We created a game of Fruit Ninja, that really old mobile game, using the wrist key points as the blade to cut the fruits. And by we created, I mean Claude and me. Claude is a large language model like ChatGPT, and I just copy and pasted that initial sample code into Claude and asked it to make a game of Fruit Ninja with the pose estimation data. We've also done some similar things in the past with pose estimation, like making a game of Space Invaders and Breakout. It can be a bit of a tricky thing and it took a few attempts to get it right, but after sorting out some issues, we were able to get this working. This code is really dense and a little hard to understand, so I wouldn't expect anyone to dive into this to try and figure out how it works, but we just included it because it's a fun demo and it really shows what you can do with this sort of stuff, where you can take it and how you can use LLMs to create some really cool stuff with pose estimation. It's really, it's really disorientating because it's your wrists, not your hands or your fists, so it's not a body part you're used to orientating in 3D space. It does also speed up and get harder the longer the game goes. Well, I think that about wraps that up. Hopefully this guide has gotten those creative juices flowing of what you can do with this, and it's also showing you how to do it. If you use this guide to make something cool, or you just need a hand with anything we covered in this video, we have a maker forum which you'll find at the bottom of the written guide. You can ask your questions, whatever you need there. We're all makers and we're happy to help. Till next time though, happy making. 